In this episode of Monswake Garage, we're actually going to give you a proper introduction to our 1967 Dodge Dart 270. So, I've shot a couple of videos. Me just tooling around in the car, working in the engine bay, and I kind of did them out of order. So, I figure it's time to give you a proper introduction to this 55-year-old blue beast. So, a little bit of information on the car. Uh, it is originally a New England car. Uh, it was bought new in New Hampshire, I believe it was, in 1967. In 1976, the original owner then sold it to his son as his son's first car. Now, that's who I bought it from. Um, guy by the name of Tom. Great guy. Tom really loved this old beast. Um, he actually let his mom drive it for quite a while. And then uh, it got parked. It got parked for... 15 years first in a barn and then another 15 years in a storage unit. So for a New England car that was winter driven in the salt in the snow, it is in great condition. My hope is once we get this mechanically sound, not necessarily pretty, but sound, and it, uh, it drives well, runs well, uh, we can drive up and see Tom. He's about two and a half hours from us and uh, he can take it for a spin. Without further ado, let's uh, let's get a walk around this blue beast. Before we get started walking around this thing, checking it out, um, needs a name. You guys have any ideas? Good name for this car? Leave them down in the comments. Yeah, let's get started. Starting from the back here, uh, you can see that the original color on this thing was bright blue metallic. Uh, it is, the paint is rough. Uh, I did some work on the trunk here just to see if I can't bring it up, but you come up and look and there, there's some really deep gouges here, kind of run across the back of the trunk. So this is eventually going to get a paint job. I just wanted to kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, the trim, you can see the trim's got some, some dents in it here. And then, uh, this bumper, this bumper is rough. There are some points, particularly this spot right over here, where pretty much all that's left is the chrome. Pull that open, you see right down into the bumper. We run up the passenger side of the car, you can see... She's had some makeshift bodywork done, and there's more of that up to the front. We do, however, have our rear wheel well trim, and it's in pretty good condition. That should clean up nicely. Now, the trim behind the doors is here. Uh, for both sides, it's in really bad condition. So, we'll probably drop that off altogether. But one of the things I found is really cool, and I hope that I can save is there's some really interesting pinstripe work around the door handles and from the looks of where the replacement fenders that are on this is there was some pinstriping work here as well that uh, they intended to replace and never got around to it so get a nice little ding here that we're gonna have to pull out our Antenna is non-existent. And you can just see the old oxidation and wear and tear of this thing just sitting out in the elements for a while. I said I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit in the short term. But uh, in the long term, just getting a fresh coat of paint. Uh, front trim, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, the grill's in decent condition. Even the front bumper here is in decent condition. So that's good. And overall, for this car being as old as it is, and for being a New England car, really happy with it. Now, underneath, little bit different story. And uh, we will get to that here in a bit. So the driver's side is much of the same. We've got this... Uh, looks like a marker for the scroll work that was on there 
if you walk, run down the side here, we have more uh, of that pinstriping. It's kind of hard to see because it's much more faded on this side, but more of the pinstriping around the door handles. I really like that. But uh, rocker panels actually look pretty decent. We're, we're going to end up patching those holes. Um, that's for where the underside door trim went, and I'm probably not going to replace that. But quarter panel here is pretty routed out. So we've got this back piece. Uh, it looks like there may have been some patchwork done on this at some point. Say around the fender well or wheel well here is pretty chewed up, and uh, we got some bondo showing through here in the back. There was definitely some work done. And then this is the spot back here. Uh, this is pretty common for these. And it looks like there's been some patchwork done over top of it and some Bondo. And we're going to fix that. Uh, already looking for quarter panel skin. So pretty much replace the whole quarter from the door. Uh, from that the leading edge of the quarter all the way back to the tail. So I want to do that on both sides. Get it nice and pretty. Let's get up under this hood and see what we got underneath, what we're messing with. Now we got this hood up. Some of the uh, New England Knights start to show their face. You can see across here, she's a little rusty. The good thing is, is most of it's just surfaced rust. I mean, it's flaking a bit, but I think that'll clean up pretty nicely. Uh, when we got in here originally, we found up all up all in the cracks and the crevices here um there were mice living in there so when we get down into the darkness this is our engine this is a the original motor for it it is a chrysler 273 and as you can see it's been worked on um, it's one of the very first things we did. Well, the very first thing we did on this was to take care of the brakes because a wise man once told me the three orders you work on a classic car. You make sure it stops, you make sure it goes, and then you make sure it's legal. So we did brakes first. Uh, just got four wheel drum brakes all the way around. Uh, they're the nice 10 and a half inch brakes and the small bolt pattern. Now, these tiny little wheels here these uh, wheels and tires are, it came with the 13 inch rims. We picked up just a cheap set of 175 70R13s, which are way too small for this car. Just to get it to roll around, be able to move around the property, move in and out of the garage. And the old wheels that were on it were just shot. So um, we did a new battery. We completely tore down and rebuilt the engine. I will pop some pictures in here maybe i don't know we'll see uh we added headers so there's the new brake master cylinder you would not be able to tell it's new because well it's rusted out already um we hit some of the electrical new ballast resistor um new voltage regulator right there uh yeah And we also got a new radiator because as we talked about in one of the last videos, the old one decided it didn't want to work anymore. Popped in a new alternator and new filters. And that's pretty much it on the engine. We are currently working on a two barrel, four barrel conversion. Come on off with you bink so this is what we got right now and it has a couple of problems a it leaks i'm not sure why yet uh, i've set the floats i've made sure that they are correct the only thing i have not done with this so far is check the fuel pump it is still the original fuel pump and it works but i think it might be giving us a little too much pressure but the other thing that it does is when you go from an idle to just flat wide open you really hit the gas it just stumbles and bugs so 
we are in the process of working on a four barrel conversion for this. Um, that video should hopefully be coming very shortly because when I'm done with this, I'm gonna work on that. You can also see here, we've got brand new fuel lines and those new fuel lines, I don't know if we can see down in there. Those new fuel lines run all the way back to the back of the car. To here, our brand new gas tank. Uh, you can also see that we have added a nice pretty exhaust. That is a Summit Racing exhaust and it sounds really good. There are videos of it on the channel. You're more than welcome to check it out. Let's get into the interior and take a look. See how she looks inside. That seat is tore right up. So this was a custom order unit. Um, it is a bright blue metallic exterior with, I don't know how well you can see on the doors here, with a dark blue metallic interior color with white door panels, white seats. Uh, the rear seat's already out. We did that when we were uh, hanging the exhaust. Needed a spot to hang the muffler, so hung them from the seat belt bolts back there. As we climb in here, you can see it's not in horrible condition. Uh, it's dirty. Uh, underneath the rear seat was one giant mouse apartment complex. But uh, overall, the metal is in great shape back here. Like I say, I get a little bit of rust here in the corners. And uh, the headliner, wow. Like, I was floored when I opened this up and I took a look and I'm like, Man, the headliner's about perfect. Uh, but then the other day, as I was installing those little gauges, I happened to look up at the ceiling, and then I found this. So that's, at some point, all gonna come out. Now I've done a little bit of cleanup work so far with this, and, uh, it actually cleans up pretty good. These are the original door panels. This is cracked and probably gonna need to be replaced. But the mounts here, I'm thinking I wanna take those and soak them in hydrogen peroxide with a UV light and try to restore some of their original color and get rid of the yellowing. That should work pretty well. Taking a look at our floor in here, uh, you can see the carpet is pretty much shot I pull the carpet back here. We've got some work to do on the floors. Uh, it's even worse on the passenger side. We've got more of the carpet up, you know. We got some, uh, got some holes here. We got some holes there. And as you can actually see through this hole, uh, this piece underneath, this is our uh, torsion bar cross member. And that also is pretty chewy. If I can get under here, I'm out in the driveway right now on really low tires. If I can get under here, I will show you the very unique modifications that have been done to it. But overall, as we scan across the dash, it's not in bad condition. It's got a factory radio that is the original AM radio. I haven't even checked to see if it works. We'll do that here in a minute. Come across the trim. The trim is uh, a little chewy, but uh, I originally thought, and what is on the title, was that this thing had 86,000 miles. But as we get in here and take a look, that is 14,377 miles. Now, knowing how much this was driven, it's definitely 114,000, but still, take a look at that pedal. It's either been replaced, which is entirely possible, or it's a 14,000 mile car. It's not a 14,000 mile car. I know it's not. I tore the engine apart. So the real question, does the radio work? Let's see. Makes noise. But, uh, no, we're not getting any, uh, 
any radio stations. It's probably because there's no antenna, but that's cool. That's really cool. Now let's see if we can get under and get a look at that torsion bar cross member and that very, very interesting modification that I spoke about. Let's get under here. Yeah, you see that? That is an I-beam. That I-beam has been bolted to the torsion bar cross member. And uh, there's one on the other side too. Then they took and they welded the retaining socket in place. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get in there and replace that. There's a couple of other spots underneath here that are gonna have to get looked at. There's a shot of the new fuel line, new exhaust. Nice mufflers and uh, some of that glorious replacement bodywork that we're gonna have to take care of. Next, we're gonna go back and take a look at the trunk. So here's our trunk. Looks pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of rot. Let's see if I can get in here. It's dark. A little bit of rot in the corner there. And just a, a little pinhole right here but other than that it's in good shape and some surface rust I've already checked on it pounded on a little bit it's not all the way through when we got this this whole wheel well was all full of water um, so we're definitely gonna have to replace the seal here I originally this was all full of uh, leaves and stuff and I originally shot thought it that it was rotted out but um it's not it's pretty solid same with the other side here just the uh, the paint coming up but that's really it looking up on the inside of the trunk that is uh her original bright, bright blue metallic color and this was another spot up here kind of across this channel where uh, we had mice living in there matter of fact there's still a touch of mouse house left in there we'll get that cleaned up and uh, hopefully looking in good order there's a uh, another spot here in the frame that we're gonna have to repair when we work on the floors you can see a little bit of rot right there but so this is supposed to be fully boxed in as you can see so i sit here and knock 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 and oh my my hand disappears so <laughs> we've actually got a length from here to about here that is just completely gone and the back side is pretty pretty chewed up as well get you in there and get a look at it there we are so that's that's the probably the biggest problem spot uh, aside from the transmission cross member and there are my headers that with these tires sit way too close to the ground but uh, hopefully new wheels and tires will help get some clearance there so I got the car back in the garage and I realized there's something I forgot to check. Does the horn work? Let's find out. It does. Sweet. I hope you've enjoyed the walk around of our 1967 Dodge Dart. If you like what you've seen, consider giving us a thumbs up and even your subscription. That way, when we post new videos, you'll get notification right away we look forward to seeing you again on Monswick Garage. Goodbye.